If you're new, my name is Olivia, and since I've been consistent on YouTube in the past five years, oh my god, it's been five years? Lord. Uh, I've gotten a handful of requests to have a room tour. I think the reason I put it off for so long was just because the format of a room tour video confused me and overwhelmed me, and I'm sure I made it much more difficult in my head than it needed to be, but as with most things. So I spent an ungodly amount of time watching room tour videos in order to figure out what exactly that looked like. I did my best. I will note really quick before we get into it that you'll notice there's a stark difference. I either accumulate things with people gifting me things or with a lot of thrift store or antique shopping. I just, those are just fun stores for me. I like to make a lot of my own things, but also on the other end of the spectrum, I do invest good money into something that I at least hope <laughs> will last me a long time, be very durable and be of quality of the money that I spent on it. And you'll see, like, I have a rug in my room and I, I did all this research to figure out if this rug was worth the money that I was putting into it. So something like that, you know, like I, I did spend, I think it was, it was like a good amount. It was like a hundred and something on this smallish rug. Uh, but there were a bunch of other things about it that I liked and I did a bunch of research on it to make sure that I was spending that amount of money. Um, and it wasn't going to be ruined, you know, in the next year or so. Like I want it to last a long time and be quality. So just, Kind of an overview of that. This has been an accumulation over years of collecting and just kind of finding little bits and bobs everywhere throughout my whole life. So it, it wasn't something that I just kind of like thought in my head, oh, this is my aesthetic and went out and just bought all these things. It's just been a slow collection. And that, and when people know that you like something, the people around you tend to gift these things to you. So if if you like something, if there's like an aesthetic or a thing that you collect of that sort, whether it's plants or pinned insects or anything, if you make that known, you'll start to notice that people will just start to gift you these things. Last thing is I will be showing most of my altars in my room, but there are altars that I'm just not willing to share with the internet just because that's personal and you know not everything needs to be shared on the internet so there is one that's covered and there is one that i just don't really go through that's all it is if you're curious about there's pieces that i kind of skip over or there's a there's an altar that's covered that's what it is uh i think that's all of the like preface stuff otherwise i'm gonna go with the format that i found on youtube and hope that that satisfies so cue the lo-fi super chill music and the nice voiceover and the smooth panning shots and I hope that you enjoy the video. Getting straight into it, right when you walk into my room you will see above the doorway a warding sigil accompanied by a protection sachet that I've made. Then as you come in, of course, smack in the middle of my room is the pole. And this pole is from Lil Minx, but I highly suggest if you are looking to get a home pole to invest in an X pole, and I can leave a link in the description for that. So starting from when you walk in to the right of the door, there is a protection sachet and a protection jar that I renew every dark moon. And right above my ancestor altar, you'll see these paintings that I made way back in 2016 when I was taking this acrylic painting class just kind of for fun because acrylic was a new medium for me. So that was a lot of fun to make and each of these are made with a different, not medium, but a different technique. So right below my ancestor altar is a bookshelf 
compiled of mainly books, but first there are a bunch of empty and half-filled sketchbooks and notebooks. Then I've got a couple of books, a lot of them I've reviewed on my channel already. And below that I've got my books of shame turned around that I don't really use but not bad enough to get rid of. Then this box is full of just trinkets that I've accumulated or letters of such through my travels. Then we're going to move on to where I spend a huge majority of my time, at my desk. First off, hanging on my chair is all of my camera gear, and all of my camera gear, well, most of it, can fit inside this Sunny 16 camera bag, which I absolutely adore. It's accompanied by this Hagstone charm with a sigil for safe travels made for me by my friend Tally. Being that I spend a huge majority of my time here, this is usually what my desk looks like, but going through, starting from the right to the left, I'll go through all of the knickknacks and whatnot on my desk. In this little box, you'll see that I have all of these different notebooks, and a couple of these notebooks are for studying different languages, one of them is for a course that I'm in, another is my bullet journal, and then usually I have another journal that you saw laying in my desk. This little doll I found in some antique store, I'm sure. This little desk caddy from Peg and All, right next to one of my favorite little specimens I've ever received, is this tiny little red octopus. Then here's a birthday card that my friend Meg got me. I've got my laptop, a journal of just chaotic scribblings, and my external drive along with my glasses and an SD card. And then to the left, we have a photo of some of my students from a showcase after the show. Then a tile that I made a few years ago that I have painted and charged. And that sits on top of that is a wine bottle that I will sometimes burn candles on. Then we've got this book holder that usually just holds my iPad so that I can see things like my Google Calendar, but when that's out of the way, you can see these two books that I've had forever and a golden skull with a crown, both of which have been gifted to me by two different friends, and this wonderful pen that I got from the Witch's Box. Moving on, we've got my chalkboard calendar that I absolutely adore that I got from Target a few years ago. And on here you'll see just a quote that I liked, a tarot card, and a sigil. And then we have these hand-dipped beeswax candles that were gifted to me that I just cannot bring myself to burn. Then we move a little bit above my desk. This candle holder I found at a thrift store, and it holds a pull-out candle, and most of the time this is a working spell candle that I have. And this stick above it, I actually get a lot of questions on. It's just a stick that I found that I ended up using twine and using macrame and working in some not magic. I've had some flowers in there and hung some basil to dry. All right, so let's move from my desk over to my tea bar and right above it, you will see this mirror that I got at a yard sale that I absolutely love. And here's the tea bar. First and foremost, this is my electric tea kettle. I adore this thing because you can set it at a specific temperature, which can really make or break your tea. Then I have these three different books, and yes, sometimes I will mix a couple of alcoholic drinks, depending if my friends are coming or as offerings. I don't feel like I need to explain this one. I've got these little potion jars that I'm pretty sure I got at Michael's around Halloween, and really they just carry a bunch of tea infusers and compostable tea bags. I have these coasters that I got at a thrift store. And this jar is kind of just compiled of a bunch of different things. Here, I'll show you. I've got a wine stopper with a crystal on it that my mom gave me, bottle opener and wine opener of an owl, and then just some spoons, either for mixing or scooping out tea. These tiny little teaspoons I found at an antique store. And below is all of the tea. My tea collection is accumulated from mainly tea that I buy for myself, but a lot of tea that is gifted to me, ones that I blend myself sometimes, which is rare, and others from a tea subscription box. 
which if you're surprised to hear that, you shouldn't be. Then I've got a container for all of the individual packets, just so that they're not kind of thrown everywhere. That is pretty much my full tea bar. Then as we move all the way up, we have where I hang my tea mugs. The mugs that are hung here change out a lot, and above that we've got some bitters when I make cocktails, one of my ritual cups that I use for special occasions that I got in Okinawa, some brown sugar, and another tea infuser. Then on the very top is yet another teapot. Then we move on to my altar area. So all of this has all of the herbs, the powders, the ingredients, anything that I might need just in the middle of a working so that I can just reach down and grab it. And then over here I've got a couple of these books that I have found at antique stores that I'm planning on gutting and turning into either a sketchbook or a notebook. Then in this crate, this is more of just miscellaneous items, things that I can't really fit anywhere else. A lot of the time it's just a very small amount of herbs. Then here is my working altar. You'll see this hung up. This is another piece that I made with watercolor and ink in 2016. Then here is a mortar and pestle my mom got for me on one of her trips that she just came back from recently. Some herbs and little different items that I've collected. And in this corner is a candle from Wild Blackthorn. I'll link that. A wishing rock from when I visited Annie. A doll that Dylan made when he was in New Orleans that he gave me. A big slab of quartz and some whiskey. Then there's this jewelry box that I found at an antique store, and inside it holds my protection amulet that I've created out of an antler and some oracle cards. Then on the actual table I've got my tarot cards from Ophidia Rosa, and this crystal that is carved into a crocodile that I found in my last visit in LA, all sitting on a rabbit pelt. I have this incense holder that my mom got me, some antique nails from, again, an antique store, and a jar of antlers. Then here is my bone throwing kit, and you can see one of the shisha dogs that my brother got me while I was visiting in Okinawa. Here's a skull that one of my friends gave me that she found on a hike of hers while she was visiting. And of course I can't forget my notebook, the Magic of Eye notebook that I write down all of my workings in. Then we're going to move up to this shelf that my friend DJ got me for Christmas. And there's not a ton on this shelf at the moment, it's just kind of different bits and bobs. I have some snake vertebrae, a hornet's nest, an empty little beaker, and some extra oils. Then on the side of my altar I have this little hanging tea light candle holder that I stole from my mom that she's had for years, and above it is hanging an evil eye amulet. and another ward. Also to the side and below my altar is this huge chest that I found at an antique store. On top of that has the cigar box that holds most of my oils that I use. And inside the chest is just a bunch of different other tools that are either idle, or I'm not using at the moment, or just kind of on standby. Things that I have accumulated or have been given that I just haven't had a use for quite yet. Then moving on the side, you can see my grimoire here sitting next to the chest, and this little box that if you remember the video where I went thrifting with Frankie, I found that there. Then I have all of my incense right behind that. And working up this pothos, You'll see this little working spell that I have in this terrarium type of thing. And on top of this is this giant quartz that I was given, and I'm told that they amplify things, so I figured this was a good spot for it. Then we move on to my wall of more beloved specimens. Including these wonderful antlers that was actually given to me by Marshall. 
Then we're going to move on to my window seal. So here is the current Hecate altar that I'm using for the course that I am currently studying in with Jason Miller. Then you'll see all of my plants lined up on the window seal, and below here you will see my money altar. And if you're interested in seeing more of this money altar, then I will link that video here in this card. On the window seal, I have this, I guess you could call it a travel altar, just a place to put all of the things that mean a lot to me that I have found and accumulated over my travels. More plants, more plants and a skull, a crystal, and more plants. So now we move more into the area that's like a book nook area that I spend a lot of time reading for the channel. And there's just a lot of different bits and bobs over here. You'll see crystals charging in salt that I never actually use, um, a poppet that I made forever ago and she just fits here pretty well. This candle holder that I found at a thrift store, my guitar and my ukulele, and this tapestry with moths on it that I think I got from Earthbound. And of course, another little protection piece in the form of a peacock feather. And here is my favorite and my only rug from Ruggable. The reason I liked it is because it was marketed that you could just throw it in the wash if it ever got dirty or if you spill coffee or tea on it, and turns out you can, so worth it. Then down here in this little tray, I've got a bunch of bookmarks, a page holder in the form of a little black cat, and some pens so that I can mark up my books. This tray I got from a friend who found it in an antique store for me. Then we move on to this box, and this box holds all of my tarot cards, and next to it you can see in the basket has all of my oracle cards in it. Okay, so we're almost done. We're heading over to the bed part of my room. Pretty much everything on the bed is found from Target, all of the pillows and the blankets and all that jazz. This tray was a gift that they found at an antique store that I got for Christmas, and I just absolutely adore this. Another ink art piece of mine. And these two signs were both given to me by my mom years ago, and I've always liked them. Then we have this tapestry, it's the moon card that I got from, yet again, the Witch's Box subscription box. And I get a bunch of questions on my sleepy Umbreon, which I totally understand. And I got him at the Pokemon store while I was visiting in Okinawa. Then finally I've got another piece that was made out of charcoal that I made. Then moving down to my nightstand, it's this mirror nightstand, which I think is pretty cool, and this sparkly tree thing that lights up that was gifted to me. Another watercolor piece behind that, a amethyst cloud crystal, and this journal that one of my friends forever ago hand-stitched a design and these keys into that I now use as a dream journal. And below that is just another stack of reading books. And then hanging from my bed is this little bedside caddy that I made, just so that I can keep like my phone, my iPad, and all of the remotes for the lights and the candles that turn on, just so that I don't lose all of them. And that is pretty much my room. That's where I spend most of my time. I hope that this answered some questions or gave you some kind of inspiration. But that's all for this video, and as always, best of luck. Be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. And until next time. <laughs>